This is an opinion from Liz Truss, of all people. Remember her? The 30-day prime minister who, uh, who was outlasted by a cabbage? Here she is at American CPAC, I think, sitting next to Nigel Farage. Now, a conservative MP, especially one that was a prime minister, who sitting next to Nigel Farage is, is, is pretty uh, uh, heretical in the Conservative Party, but it seems that Liz Truss, who I've always had my doubts about, but wildcard, let's say, it seems that Liz Truss has been radicalised by, in her words, being sabotaged by Britain's deep state. Britain's deep state thwarted my plans, Liz Truss tells US quote-unquote far-right summit. So the Guardian is, is spinning this uh, more of, harder than a Beyblade, but yeah, the CPAC is not far-right. It is just the conservative uh, uh, summit, I think, in the US. But Liz Truss and Farage are there. Now, Liz Truss, um, she came in with some really stupid ideas, but also some interesting ideas. And I wanted to see how it went. At the very least, it would shake things up. At the very least, it would, uh, it would, it would cause some, some, some things to change. I, I believed that she sincerely wanted what she said, even though what she was asking for was, in some cases, kind of nuts. But I was willing to, to see what happened. This was just after Boris, by the way. Yeah, I agree, Wes. Like, it was, it was adventurous what she was advocating for. Some of it was silly, but it was adventurous. It was, it was not empty suit nonsense. Um, so yeah, I, I was somewhat positive about her, but then she just sort of disappeared from politics. It seemed like the entire economic center of the UK just coalesced all at once to get rid of her. And in collaboration with politicians and everyone wanted to get rid of her. Maybe it was because despite the fact that she was kind of mad, she was our girl, uh, at least well enough. And now she is, she, she's the first person I've heard using the term deep state in the UK. I have no doubt that it exists. And I always suspected that maybe she was sabotaged rather than just being so detestable that people dropped her. But, and here sitting next to Farage, it makes this story very much interesting as well. Like the, the I don't know, I don't know where's how much you've been following it, but the, the, the situation with politics in the UK right now is very d turbulent, very, uh, very unbalanced. The Conservative Party is, is doing very badly. And it's got to the point where I would give it a 25% chance that they will literally bring Farage in to the Conservative Party in the next year. Whether he'd accept or not, I don't know. But in any, any previous year, that would be less than 1% chance. But it's, like, it's so much more likely now. And Reform UK, which is a, a more conservative Brexit-focused uh, like Brexiteer party, is uh, starting to take their poll numbers. In a recent poll... Reform UK was only seven points behind the Conservative Party nationwide, which is a uh, shocking difference. So this interaction between these two figures could be the start of something much bigger. The, the next year of British politics are going to be very interesting, I think. If all the people I don't like dislike someone, that is a major point in their favour. I agree, yeah. Former Conservative PM, whose tenure lasted 50 days, I was slightly mistaken, tells CPAC she fell victim to UK's establishment, its bureaucrats and lawyers. I think she'd probably be right. Uh, Liz Truss, the former British Prime Minister, spoke at a quote-unquote far-right conference in America on Wednesday, styling herself as a populist who took on America's equivalent of the deep state in her own country. She's speaking to Americans, she's using language they will understand, but I still think she's right. Truss was among the headline speakers at this week's Conservative Political Action Conference. At the National Harbour in Maryland, CPAC is billed as the biggest annual gathering of Conservatives in the US, but has in recent years embraced Donald Trump's brand of nativist populism. How dare he appeal to the people that live in the country? <laughs> How dare he be a nativist populist? <laughs> you, Guardian. In Wednesday's opening session, an international summit, the XPM sat side by side with Nigel Farage, former leader of the Brexit party, both with small union flags on the table in front of them. Other speakers included Steve Bannon. A for I don't want to hear your opinion on Steve Bannon, The Guardian. Frankly, I do not want to hear it. Richard Grenell, former acting director of intelligence. Um, officials uh, from uh, Australia, Hungary and Japan also took part. A moderator of the summit introduced trust by saying after her election in Britain, there was a collective cheer in the conservative movement in the United States saying, wow, Margaret Thatcher is back. Wouldn't go quite that far, but she did seem interesting. Better than Rishi. That's why I was, I was in support of Truss over Rishi. I'll say that now. I was, I, 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 I'll, I'll claim that valour. I said, yes, Truss over, over Rishi. Yeah, far right, it was not communism, exactly. Well, the same bunch of weirdos run my nation. Yeah, exactly. It, it is ultimately the same kind of influence. I agree. Associated with global far right nationalism. When you're calling, C exactly as Jack says, when you're calling CPAC far right, what?
kind of words do you have to, to, to use to describe Steve Bannon or describe Alex Jones? What kind of words do you have left? Not for the first time, Truss, whose premiership lasted only 50 days, sought to portray herself as the victim of bureaucratic forces. And was she not, The Guardian? You're among the bureaucratic forces, by the way. I ran for office in 2022, she says, because Britain wasn't growing, the state wasn't delivering, and we needed to do more, she said. I wanted to cut taxes, reduce the administrative state, take back control, as people talked about in the Brexit referendum. What I did face was a huge establishment backlash, and a lot of it actually came from the state itself. Yeah. Like, this is why, uh, like, with, with Rishi Sunak, I've seen, like, occasional tiny bright sparks, but mostly nothing. And the, the establishment let him rule, so it's a pretty good indication he's not going to do anything good. And that Truss might have done, actually. Now, the thing is that Truss, I, the reason I call her policies mad is that some of her policies were, we're going to borrow massively and our children will pay for it, but we're going to use the money sensibly. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, not sure about that. Uh, but like, if, if you use it to build exclusively nuclear power stations or like nuclear power stations, infrastructure, and like Things that governments should do, like military perhaps, okay, maybe that's okay, like, it is a time of desperation, so maybe that's okay. Still, though, she did have some mad ideas. I wanted to see what, what would happen, though. The field says I'd support a weak old Jewish ham over Rishi. Interesting analogy. But, uh, yeah. Uh, an empty suit, a nothing candidate, is almost the worst we could have right now. Almost to the extent that it's, uh, it's. Uh, I don't think I would prefer Corbyn over Starmer, because Corbyn would 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 slam the knife in our neck, whereas Starmer would just continue running it across our skin. But uh, still, like something to shake up the system would probably be better right now than another empty suit. It looks like we're going to get Starmer right now, but things could change before the election. She continued, what has happened in Britain over the past 30 years is power that used to be in the hands of politicians has been moved to quangos and bureaucrats and lawyers. So what you find is a democratically elected government actually unable to enact policy. So that's what it looks like. Like I've seen in the last five years, politicians who I thought had better intentions than they demonstrated. And I think that's why. Now, quangos is a term you don't have in the US, I don't think. Quasi-NGO. quasi non -go it's a term I think you should start using, because NGO, non-governmental entity, organization rather, rarely are. They rarely are. Sometimes they're uh, uh, super governmental entities, like the WHO, for example, or the EU, indeed. But quango, uh, qu uh, quasi-NGO, meaning, qu quasi meaning not really, to put it simply, they are an NGO in name only. Uh, kind of like your term rhino, which also kind of works here. Although we don't have the name, they don't want to term Republican, but still. Uh, Kino, conservative in name only, still works here. Truss was interrupted and asked to explain the meaning of quango. Of course she was. <laughs> she replied, a quango is a quasi non-governmental organization. In America, you call it the administrative state or the deep state. But we have more than 500 of these quangos in Britain and they run everything. She went on to list the Environment Agency, Office for Budget Responsibility, Bank of England and Judicial Appointments Commission. There's a whole bunch of people. Like, this is... This is, I think, the problem. The British system, political system, whatever you think of the British versus the American system, I know many of you prefer the American one, that's fine, but what I advocate for in the British system is its advantage at base in principle over the American system is that it is simpler in principle. But this, this is how you ruin that. You keep it simple, sure, the, the Commons keeps churning, you get some good people in there, but the Commons doesn't really have the power. It's become dramatically overcomplicated by all these extra agencies, which just ruin the potential for simplicity. That's what we need to get back to. Simpler government, even if it isn't necessarily smaller, just simpler, more contained, simpler to understand, more transparent, because it's easier to understand, because it's simpler. That's all it needs, really. Um, politicians need to do their jobs, not rely on quangos to do it for them, where they don't really have any say anymore. But yeah, uh, I, I think I need to learn more about the exact system. But the thing is, it's, it's so complex, you can't learn about it. I think the US has a degree of this problem. But in the US, perhaps you're more fortunate that it's more isolated in fewer entities. Um, then again, maybe it's overall more, because you've got 50 states. This reminds me of the, but then each state controls their own thing. So it reminds me of the French guild system that held back the Industrial Revolution by 200 years. I could believe that, yeah. Both Corbyn and Starmer think women have penises. No, thank Yeah, well, I mean, y y <laughs> we're talking about the, the, the literally pick your poison, which poison will kill you slower or which poison might you survive. There's no good options, I'm afraid.
There's a whole bunch of people, she says, and I describe them as the economic establishment who fundamentally don't want the status quo to change because they're doing quite fine out of it. That's the same pretty much everywhere. Um, they don't really care about the prospects of the average person in Britain, and they didn't want things to change, and they didn't want that power taken away. Trust, and this is this is simple analysis of the situation, but I think it's correct. I think it is this simple, roughly. Truss added, so I think that's the issue we now face as conservatives. It's not enough just to will conservative policies and say we want to control our borders or we want to cut taxes or we want to reform our welfare system because we have a whole group of people now in Britain with a vested interest in the status quo who actually have a lot of power. Now, in that situation, democracy has been eroded significantly and so it can't be as effective. Which maybe is why Britain is seeing a slower recovery than the US. Um, there's other factors, of course, I'm sure. But um, in the US, your uh, the, the, the evil people captured, uh, to a large extent, Congress and the presidency, which is where the power truly lies. In the UK, it seems like, unfortunately, that's, they, they captured institutions, quangos, and now the power should lie where the people are electing people, but it doesn't. We've been doing okay with elections over the last five years, but the power hasn't actually flowed through, and this is probably why. Um, I'm not sure what the solution to that is. Um, Actually, you know what? I, I, I know what the solution to that is. We have another form of power in this nation, which is supposed to be able to supersede Parliament when necessary. It is actually time, some of you are not going to like this, it's actually time for the monarch to say, uh, executively, these quangos need to be repealed. You have five years. Repeal them by the end of it. Five years may be too generous, I don't know. But literally, afuera. Um, if the parliament cannot do it, the king has to. That's how our system works. Similarly to the president in the US. Now people are joining the civil service who are essentially activists, Trust said. They might be trans activists, they might be environmental extremists, but they are now having a voice within the civil service in a way I don't think was true 30 or 40 years ago. We, uh, so we just have a wholly new problem, and frankly, a hundred political appointees doesn't even touch the sides in terms of dealing with them. And I know, I know chat, that I just spent several hours discussing why monarchy um, is, is not as good as democracy, but one, we... We do have a monarch here who has some powers, and they probably don't use them as much as they should. Um, and two, I'm not saying that that is the ideal system. Um, and three, I'm not against a monarch. In fact, several conceptions I've had of an ideal political system include a monarch-like figure. They're just not absolute. They're not the uh, de, f uh, de facto and de jure leader, um, the democratically elected uh, 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 Congress or House or whatever does legislation, but the monarch has some degree of executive power, some overriding power to repair things if the parliament doesn't work or refuses to function properly. Similar to in the US where you can have the executive. But I, I think actually I kind of like both ideas. Maybe you could have something where it's, it is a family, but there is some legitimate procedure to just put a new family in, <laughs> in there, like in the US where anyone can become president and they're re-elected frequently. You could have a system which is more like the UK's but mixes in a bit, a bit of that as well, where you have an assumed family, yes, but with enough will from the people, you can just replace them with a new family. It wouldn't take bloody war to do that, like it has in the past. Um, instantiating some of that stuff as genuine rules might be a good idea. And I think there's a lot of potential for a um, parliamentary democracy system, a democracy system to improve from where it is now, for the formula to genuinely improve. The monarch that is 100% WEF and said, yeah, I, I know, Wolf, the current one, no. But he does have cancer. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but um, it might, he may not be around for very long. My, my, my point is not that he will do it. My point is that the position ought to. Because that's where the how the power works in, in or should work in this country. The solution is to have civil war five the deportation farce. It, it it may it may come to that, unfortunately. Like if if Parliament literally can't do anything about this, and that's the only way that our votes matter, what do we do? Take back the institutions? Sure. But Afuera is the answer. But how do you get the Afuera ing started? How do you do it legitimately? Do you even bother doing it legitimately? If you don't do it legitimately, then you might lose a lot more than you expect. Current British system is literally perfect as long as the monarch acts, but they don't and haven't in a long time, says Ronald Thumb. You, I'm not sure I'd say, I don't think I'd say perfect, but I think it, it, will work, it would work a lot better than it does today. If the monarch just did a, a few things, executive things, to repair the course of democracy, 
Um, no, I wouldn't even put it that way because it's not it's not the course of democracy. It's the miscourse of democracy. It's where democracy is being misused and sabotaged and abused. It is it is an odd one, though, to say that the monarch is supposed to protect democracy. But I think maybe the, the system is that, that, that could work. And this is an idea of our chat. Tell me what you think is that you have a monarch-like figure, perhaps with the idea of replacing them uh, at, at the will of the people, as I mentioned earlier. But the monarch's duty is to retain the dignity of the British people and maybe a few other basic things. But that's like the main one. And then within that, you can have implicit policies like a constitution, which are responsibilities of the monarch. It's a top-down system, I grant, but bear with me because it might work. And then what you can do is the monarch can make edicts, something like an edict, which the parliament can then veto. If the parliament vetoes it, it's decided by referendum. I think that could work, a system like that. Um, and the, 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 also any law that parliament makes can be vetoed by the monarch, which is how it is today, but they don't do it for some reason. I wonder why. <laughs> I, it, it's hard to, like, I haven't done as much thought about how to repair the UK um, as I have about the US, because I talk about US politics more. But um, I reckon it could be. I reckon it could be improved. Yeah, I, th I think. I, I think I might want to um, learn a bit more about how our systems worked under the British Empire, because uh, we still have Parliament then, of course. Um, I just wonder what other key differences. <clears throat> Is it just the people? Is the structure fine? It's just the people in it. It could be. That's mostly the problem in the US as well. The structures are fine, it's just the people in them. But then, at least in the US. Um, the pro as I said, the, the corruption is mostly centered in Congress and the presidency. Um, obviously, there's loads of, of, of quangos, but they don't override the existing power structure. In the UK, it seems that they do, or they, they distort it so much, so democracy can't directly access it, which is why I say perhaps the solution, therefore, is the monarch. Demoralization generations of it. Exactly. Now, we definitely agree on that, Wes. I just wonder if there is a way to improve the, improve the structures. Um, to prevent some of these common problems. Because like the civil, the civil service existed during the empire. What is so different about it today? It, 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 could just, it could just be that it's been demoralized, that the structures are fine. They're literally fine. It's just that that's where the problem has arisen. But in, in that case, it's a weak point. And I wonder how we could improve it. Maybe a system whereby any, any decision by parliament, any legislation, is literally impossible to block if it receives both royal assent and referendum assent, then it becomes a diktat. Something like AFWERA, all the institutions as part of a five-year plan. Parliament implements it. The civil service all rebel, but then there's a referendum and it, it passes. I don't know, because the ref, the ref, like, all of that stuff is going to depend upon the civil service continuing to function to like, facilitate it. So I don't know. That, 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 that's, that's tough. I'll continue reading. Now people are joining the civil service who are essentially activists. Uh, as she said, in an opinion piece public... Oh, this is a great picture. Farage has the best faces. What a, what a fantastic face from Farage there. Wes says, the problem isn't legal, it's cultural. Demoralization caused lack of vigilance and lack of vigilance allows a free civilization. I agree. No, we definitely agree on that, Wes. Um, I, I just wonder if, if there's more that can be done structurally to prevent this weak point from being a weak point. Because it does, it does seem like a weak point. Actually, Farage is the real-life troll face, yeah. In an opinion piece published on the Fox News website, the former Prime Minister said that the agents of the left are active in the administrative state and the deep state. Ladies and gentlemen, the CPAC revolution, taking back our parties. Please welcome... Uh, parties, because different country. ...from the United Kingdom. Oh, here we go. The Right Honourable Liz Truss. That's right. Thank you for using the, the correct traditional verbiage. What's this music, though? Anemic applause. Well, thank you so much. And it's fantastic to be here at CPAC with so many true conservatives. And boy, are you needed now. Because the reality is that the West has been run by the left for too long. And we've seen that it's been a complete disaster. If I had to give her some, give her some advice, She's talking too lazily and she's leaving too big gaps. What you're saying is not that important yet, Liz. Leave, leave smaller gaps and talk with a bit more gusto, if you possibly can. On the streets of our big cities, we have people protesting in favour of terrorism. Carrying placards... Okay, starting your speech with pro-Israel stuff is not where I wanted you to start, <laughs> it's not where I wanted you to start with. 
and waving flags that are anti-Semitic. Yeah, that wasn't, wasn't where I wanted to start. ...atrocities on October the 7th in Israel. Okay, that's disappointing. We have our borders out of control with illegal immigrants able to enter our countries freely. We have a growing tax burden and a growing size of government, as well as some of the most powerful bureaucratic states that we've ever seen. And our energy bills are going up because of the Green New Deal or net zero, even though China is building coal-fired power stations at a record rate. I'm, I'm, I'm like minus the Israel stuff. I'm seeing now that she's advocating for all the <laughs> all the same ideas that Trump did, and I'm wondering did did she display this kind of uh, uh, policy when I when she was running, and I just didn't didn't, didn't notice, or has she been radicalised since then? Yeah, uh, one point five speed, please, Liz. What I want to talk most of all about today is the fact that the very basis of Western civilization is being undermined. The values, the Anglo-American values that we hold dear that were encapsulated in Magna Carta, in the Bill of Rights, in the American Constitution. They're being questioned and undermined. Our history is being challenged. Even our biology is being challenged. Can you imagine, could you have imagined 10 years ago that we'd be talking about what a woman is and what a man is and having a serious argument about it? It's incredible. And yet every issue, the left win, they push it even more. They push it to even more extremes. And meanwhile, we've seen President Biden asleep at the wheel in the White House. Literally, in most cases. Well, not the wheel part's not literal, necessarily. Now, in Britain, we are one of the few countries that still have a conservative government. But the left did not accept that they... Not really. Not really. It's neolib with a blue tint, I'm afraid, right now. But the left did not accept that they'd lost at the ballot box. Instead, they've been weaponizing our court system to stop us deporting illegal immigrants. They've been using the administrative state to make sure that conservative policies are thwarted. And they've been pushing their woke agenda through our schools, through our campuses, and even in our corporations. Now yeah, so it's a different strategy of, of um, sabotage in the US and the UK, both very focused on how our structures work. Well, I thought that companies in the free market were meant to be about giving people jobs, giving people opportunities, making money, making profits, creating wealth for our country. But no, we've got a new kind of economics now in the West. It's called Wokeonomics. It's actually about DEI and ESG and all those other three-letter acronyms that mean less opportunities for people and less future for our nation. That's what we are facing now even in countries with conservative governments, because of the power of the left and the power of those bureaucracies. And the left are aided and abetted by our enemies overseas. Now, that includes Russia. It includes Iran. And most of all, it includes China. Thank you. Which stands behind all of them. And what Israel is also in that list, but you're not ready to hear that yet, Yeliz, I don't think. <laughs> And maybe not as much as China, but I think they're still in that list. What those people want to see is they don't want to just compete with countries in the West. They don't want economic competition. They want to undermine our very way of life. They want to undermine our societies. And what they want to do is they want our societies to collapse from within because we loathe ourselves, because we hate ourselves. That's what they are trying to achieve. Moralization. Our societies are literally so powerful, they cannot be defeated from without. It's impossible. They're like twice as powerful as they need to be to be unassailable from without. So they had to be defeated from within. And unfortunately, um, uh, uh, complacency mixed with extremely advanced propaganda tactics were enough to bring us down to this point. What happened is these regimes have actually been enabled by us over the past few decades. You know, we let China into the World Trade Organization. And they've, we've allowed them to undermine free markets. As I've said, these other nations around the world that have power, they don't just have that. It's almost all been given to them by the West, taken by illicit means. It's our choice, essentially, as Western nations, 
how the world runs. Because the people of our nations are just, they, they categorically create better civilizations than the people of other nations do. So it's up to us what we do now. With their unfair practices. We've almost allowed Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. Yeah, okay, but people have been saying that for like 30 years. And it seems like we're being baited by it, Liz. I don't know. And I do think it's worth me um, paying more attention to UK politics. I, I think, like, I, I obviously I pay attention to, to politics I find interesting, and my objective is to protect the Anglosphere, not just my own nation. Those two points have been, I've been, I said them many times. It's why I focus mostly on US politics. Also, it's just more exciting. But I think UK politics in the next year is going to be quite interesting. Of course, the US politics is as well, but both are worth paying attention to. And I think it's worth me knowing more about UK politics than I do, especially because I live here. So I will probably come back to this next time um, or focus on UK politics more. I know that Americans are still interested in it, just as I'm still interested in American politics. 